Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another banging episode where we are about to reveal a car that we've just built for a client. Now behind me is a killer E12 that is 98% complete and almost ready for delivery. However, this was one of the toughest cars that we've ever built in the past 12 months. If you guys want to see more of this beauty behind me, stay tuned. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, get yourself a nice blanket, make some popcorn, and let me show you guys how insane this build is. Now we come to the part that gave us stress, which was the 535 conversion. So Okay guys, now I'm super excited to tell you guys about this build, purely because it has been one of the most intense E12 builds we've ever done to date. If you watch previous episodes, especially my episode on the 535, you guys would know that Chip is an E30 man, but he loves an E12 just as much. So behind me is possibly the most coolest E12 in Africa. And I say this because the amount of work that we've actually put into this car is insane. So let me give you guys a bit of background on this particular car. So this car came to us early last year and all the way from uh, Cape Town side. The gentleman is known as Brian and he's a very passionate car guy. And Brian basically called us up and said, listen, I seen what you guys do. I wanna send you my E12, sent us a few pictures and uh, he sent us the car, the car arrived on the trailer. When I received the car, the car was a little bit tired. In fact, he actually bought the car from an auction. And you know, sometimes when you buy cars from an auction, especially as project cars, they're not complete, they're not running, and you don't necessarily know what you're buying. So regardless, Brian thought that it would be a cool idea to give this car a new life. And me being an E12 man, I agreed totally. So we bounced around with a few ideas and we came to the conclusion that number one, the color was wrong. Number two, it needed a set of wheels. Number three, the motor was totally wrong. In fact, the car started its life out as a 518 and he wanted a bit more power. So we sat down, uh, ran a few numbers, shook hands, and we started the build with the car. Now the first point of us building the car was to tackle all the rust and also to tackle the paintwork. So we stripped the car down completely to a shell and then began with the rust repair. As you can see by the pictures, the car had a hell of a lot of rust because it came obviously from uh, Cape Town side. So we decided to cut replate in a few areas and then give the car a fresh new coat of paint. The color in choice is our own mix. It's very similar to Biscuit's color. Uh, but we added a little bit of a difference in the mixture to get a slightly different uh, uh, end result. Now, because this is an old school car, back in the day, the cars used to get painted with the 2K paint. In order for us to keep to the car's theme or what the car originally came out with, instead of going with the base coat, clear coat, or the water-based paints, which is what most of the new cars come with today, we decided to keep it old school and go with the 2K color which personally I think it looks amazing, it looks awesome. And it's also almost in, in line with what the car originally came out with. So now I'm gonna take you guys to, to the Magic, which is the 535 conversion, which happens in the engine base. Now we come to the part that gave us stress which was the 535 conversion. So this is known as the first gen E12. Uh, we call it the back pocket in the Kasi, uh, but it's known as the first generation E12. So originally the car started out as a 518. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the client did want to do a 535 conversion. 
So sourcing the E12535 motor would be very difficult. So a lot of the time the guys go with the E34535 motor. But fitting the E34535 motor in a first gen E12 is not an easy task, uh, especially with the gearbox. So we had to literally refabricate the engine brackets. Uh, we had to recut on the inside tunnel to get the gearbox to fit and we had to replate. But that wasn't the challenge. The challenge was that I bought this motor as a running motor. And when we got the motor um, and we opened up the motor, we had a look that there was no way possible that this car was a running motor. So we had to rebuild the motor. Now the problem that we as, as, as car builders are facing is number one, scarcity of parts. Number two is, and, and maybe you guys have experienced this as well, um, when you buy a second-hand motor, majority of the times the ad will say it came out of a running car, and when you actually buy the motor, there's no way for you to really know that the motor was running or not, except when you turn the motor to see if the motor turns. So that is a risk that we face when we buy second-hand motors. Um, so that put a hell of a delay on the project. Uh, another thing as well, when the motor was delivered, um, the gearbox wasn't there and we bought, <laughs> we actually bought the motor with the gearbox and the gearbox wasn't delivered and it was a whole mix up. So we had to source another gearbox, uh, but nonetheless, we, we, a, as a business um, or as someone that's building cars, these are some of the delays that you face when building a car, you know? So uh, it's something that I want you guys to understand that it's not an easy task to build a car like this. Um, as much as car builders would like to say, okay, I'm gonna do your car in one month, there's a lot of factors that can uh, affect you completing. Some of the factors are load shedding. Some of the factors are you can't source parts. Some of the factors is when you fit the motor in, the motor doesn't fit, you gotta take the motor out and you gotta refabricate the brackets. Because again, for us, this is the first time we've done a conversion like this. We've never done a, a 535 uh, E34 motor in a back pocket E12. Uh, so it was something that was new to us, but the principle is the same. The principle in the sa is the same in a sense that you gotta position your motor so it clears, you gotta position your gearbox so it clears, etc., etc. So that's some of the challenges we faced as well. Uh, when we finished fitted the motor, because we weren't running the standard airflow meter, and a lot of the guys say I don't like dictator, uh, in order for us to get the car to run better, uh, we sent the car to Uncle Dino to help finish the motor conversion and set up the injectors and set up the um, dictator management system. So, so Uncle Dino also did the exhaust system for us. And, and if you hear that name in the car industry, you'll know Uncle Dino is a legend. He's been building cars from before I was even born. Uh, so he's someone that everyone looks up to, he knows his stuff and we do a lot of our work through him in terms of dictator management, etc. So shout out to Uncle Dino, thank you so much for helping us with this build. Um, so yeah, so that was some of the challenges we faced. Something that also happened throughout this build. Um, when, we f when we did a, a, a recon of the brakes and the suspension and the motor swap was done, the client wanted to add power steering. Now, this E12 does not come with power steering, so we needed to get a complete later model uh, front steering rack in order to co accommodate the power steering on this car. So that was also a mammoth task because it was very, very difficult to find the parts for this car. However, we managed to pull it off. Um, overall, the car runs very nice. As it currently stands, it's standing in the showroom. Uh, it's gone through my quality check, so there's a few tweaks we need to add here, here and there, but other than that, I'm happy at the performance, I'm happy at the power, the car moves absolutely amazing, it sounds amazing, and personally, I think this is the best motor swap that could have been done for this car. I don't know what do you guys think. Uh, maybe you guys can comment and let us know. Have you done a particular motor swap in an E12? 
Uh, what are some of the motors that you've used? Uh, maybe is there an easier way to do this conversion? Because for us it was quite difficult, uh, but we managed to pull it off with the help of Uncle Dino as well. So let us know what your comments down below. I want to show you guys something else as well. So you'll notice we didn't use the original piping. Uh, we use this type of piping because it helps with heat. It's much better. And also we use the better quality silicone piping just so that it can handle the pressure of this high performance motor. Uh, overall, the car runs nice like I've mentioned. Uh, and it's got power steering, guys. A back pocket with power steering is amazing. What do you guys think? Now before I take you guys to the interior, you might be saying like why did we leave the 518 badge on? Myself and Brian actually debated on why he wanted the 535. I told him leave the 518 badge because it also confuses the enemy. So if you rock up to a robot and let me be clear on how I put this because I have a lot of my cop friends watching. Uh, when you rock up to a robot and someone wants to maybe rev and dice you within the speed limit, and I say within the speed limit because you must obey the speed limit, they're going to get fooled by the 518, when in essence this car is technically a 535. So we put it on to confuse the enemy, and that's how I close Brian on keeping the 518 page. So remember, always wear your seatbelt, and always follow the rules of the road, and adhere to the speed limit, guys, it's super important. Now we come to one of my favorite parts of a car, which is the interior. Like I mentioned, this is where you spend most of your time. So we debated on, on, on whether we should in change the interior or not. I voted for us to keep the original interior because the interior was in such good condition. So that budget could be passed on to something else on the car to get the car to what it is. So we left the interior stock standard. The only thing we did on this interior was we repaired the back seat, uh, the panel, because it was a bit torn. And then we changed the front area of the carpet purely because when we were doing the gearbox conversion, we had to take the carpet out and the carpet was a bit rotten in the front. And we had to cut and re-weld for the gearbox to fit snug. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you guys think it was a good choice to keep the original interior? Uh, would you have gone with another type of interior? Comment with your suggestions below. I personally like it because it's still got that old car smell. It smells like an old car, guys. It really does. And the E12 has a distinct smell. If you've sat in an E12, you know what I'm talking about, guys. This car smells totally different to an E36, an E34, an E24. Each BMW has their own distinct smell, which is what I find so amusing. So yeah, so the interior was completely stock, including the roof liner. What do you guys think? Good choice or not a good choice? Now guys, what good would such a hot car that has amazing wheels, amazing paint jobs, sick motor, cool exhaust system, be without a nice banging sound system? So the client is into his old school music and uh, when he drives his cars he wants to play his jams so naturally he asked us for us to book him up with the lacquer sound system so the sound system in choice is uh, ice power setup in terms of the subs and the amplifiers so we went with two 10 inch ice power competition subs we've got a four channel on the one side we've got a mono block on the other side the mono block drives the two tens and the four channel drives the set of coaxials and the split system in the front. Now the head unit in choice was a normal Pioneer media player which is also Bluetooth compatible. So we didn't want to go with heavy sound, just something so that the client can enjoy his car. Um, we also chose to go with a little bit of a custom setup. I actually like the setup purely because you can still access your spare wheel and also your amplifiers are hidden and you have space to load. Now, you know what Chicanos, we like to add our flavor. So we decided to cover the toolkit uh, uh, 
or actually the toolkit housing in the same material as the material of the boot. I think it adds a little bit of a nice flavor to it. What do you guys think? I love doing that. It's almost like a personal touch of ours. Um, you can see as well, we replaced the rubbers on the boot. We did a whole lot of new, or we did a new rubber kit throughout the car. Uh, so obviously the car can seal better. Um, so I like it personally. When I was given the opportunity to, to build this car, I would have built my car exactly like this. And uh, that's the nice thing uh, about Brian, is that Brian, number one, was very patient with us because it's been a journey and there's been a lot of mishaps throughout this build. So number one, he's super patient, nice guy. And also he allowed us creativity freedom in terms of choosing the design of the boot, suggesting wheels, uh, suggesting little odds and ends here. And I think it's important when you build a car for a client is that they allow you a little bit of that creative freedom for you to do your thing and add your touch onto the car. So shout out to you, Brian. Thank you so much, brother, for allowing us to build this car for you. It's been awesome. Uh, you were a legend and thank you so much for your patience and understanding throughout this build. It wasn't an easy build, but you allowed us an opportunity to build this car according to what it is today. And we thank you for that, bro. Now we come to the next part. So paint is sorted on the car. The car's got a brand new motor. It's got a new exhaust, new radiator, uh, brand new recon power steering unit. Now in order for us to get the car to look or have that look, the next thing we tackled was the wheels. So the wheel of choice initially, we were supposed to go with the 17 inch wheel. However, because we weren't going to drop the car a lot, the car's got a static drop of 40 millimeters all round. I thought it'll be best for us to go with an 18 inch wheel so it can fill the arch more. So the wheel in question is an 18 inch Alpina replica wheel with 21535 18 inch tires in the front. Okay, now the tire size we went with is 8.5J all round and 21535 18 inch tires right around the car. Uh, we didn't want to give it too much of a meaty look and we also didn't want to give it too much of a stretch look. So we went with the tire that's in between. Uh, what I love about this wheel is it looks insane on any old school BMW. Um, in order for us to actually get the back to sit out a little bit more, we added a small 15 millimeter spacer just to give the car a little bit of a better stance. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you guys like the wheel? Uh, personally, I think it looks insane. I want to actually show you guys something in the front as well. I mentioned it before uh, in the E12 video. We added a front uh, replica fiberglass uh, BBS front spoiler. Trust me, on any E12, that is the go-to modification because it just changes the whole look of the car. So there is something we did in addition to the paint job on the car. So I hope you guys like it and I hope you guys like the wheel. Okay guys, now like I mentioned, this car is static. So if you want to get an understanding of what static is, static means that it's running a consistent height and it cannot be adjusted. How you achieve a static car is by doing a set of drop springs because you can't adjust the height. Now, initially, because of the power of the car, the customer is not very stance oriented. He wants to drive and enjoy the car. So we opted to go for a set of coilies. However, when you work out the cost of the coilies to manufacture a set for an E12, especially with our amazing REN that's doing so well, uh, the cost factor is insane. It's the price of bagging your car. So what we did is we took the original springs and we compressed the springs in order to allow it to have the 40 millimeter ride height all round. Um, on the suspension side as well, we did, we did do a complete brake and suspension refurbishment. So we put new discs, new pads, uh, we put new shocks all around. So the car also handles much, much better. So guys, this in front, you can see this is the BBS front spoiler. I love this look on an E12. Uh, it was a spoiler that was made specifically for this car. It's something that we do a lot of. Uh, so I hope you guys like the look personally. If you own an E12, an E23, a 635, this adds to the shark look of the car. I don't know what do you guys think, but personally, I love it. I want to give you guys another thing that we changed as well. So initially, the bumper was quite rusted. Uh, we managed to source another bumper 
But the problem is the pre-facelift bumper and, and uh, 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 the first gen and the second gen bumpers are different. So we had to buy two bumpers to actually make one bumper. So that was a custom thing that we did in-house. Uh, so it looks much better. The previous bumper was terrible. It had dings in it. It was fully rusted. So that is something small that you can get away with by buying a good second-hand part. I hope you guys enjoyed the build on this car or the process throughout the build. I hope you learned some lessons and I hope you guys are learning from this type of content. That is my intention. I'm one of the oaks that don't want to keep all the knowledge for myself because I believe knowledge is power. Uh, a question that you might have, because on our channel we've been featuring a lot of BMWs. We are not only a BMW shop. However, majority of the cars here are BMW. We have a variety of cars from Impalas to uh, old school Mercedes Benz uh, to Chevy C10s. So we do a variety of cars. And in the upcoming episodes, we're going to be revealing a few of the other branded builds that we've done. Uh, so I hope you guys are enjoying this and I hope you guys are learning. Very important. I want to say shout out to all you guys for subscribing. We're almost on 8,000 uh, subscribers. Our next place where we need to be is 10,000 subscribers. So shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed as yet, what are you waiting for, guys? You guys have to subscribe. If you want this channel to grow, if you want us to give you more content and also share a lot of our stuff, we need your support. Without you guys, this is not possible. And of course, it's standard. A special shout out to all those peeps for commenting, interacting. You guys are awesome. Thanks for showing us love. And I'm definitely going to catch you guys on the next episode. You guys be safe and I'll see you guys soon.